Hey guys, this is Miss Black from LTMS, and I just wanted to go over a couple examples with you. Um, I thought these would be helpful because these are the type of problems where you're given the volume and you have to work backwards to find the length or the width or the height of a rectangular prism. So let's look at this first example. It says a box has a volume of 128 cubic inches. Both the width and the height of the box are 4 inches. What is its length? So this is nice because they give us a visual to look at, so we see what we're working with. Um, and even if they didn't give us a picture, I would recommend drawing one. Um, I, that always helps me just to see what I've got. Um, so the first thing I would do is I would write the formula for volume of a rectangular prism. And I know that volume equals length times width times height. And forgive my handwriting, I'm trying my best, but I'm using my finger on the screen right now. Um, so hopefully you can read what I've got. All right, so the next step is to fill in the information that I already know. So first thing is the volume. We already know the volume is 128. So instead of the V, I'm going to write 128. And the next thing we got is length. Um, we don't know the length because that's what we're trying to figure out. So I'm just going to keep the L there as my variable. Um, next thing is the width, and we know that the width is 4 inches, so I'm going to multiply the length by 4. The last thing is the height, which I know is also 4 inches. So I know that 128 equals the length times 4 times 4. So next thing I'm going to do is try to simplify this equation a little bit. So I can multiply these two 4s together to get 16. And then I can bring down my variable and my equal sign and my 128. So now we've got 128 equals the length times 16. So remember, the whole purpose of this equation right now is to find the length. We want to know what the L equals. So let's think back to how we solve equations. So right now, the length is being multiplied by 16. So do you guys remember what the inverse of multiplication is, or the opposite? So the inverse of multiplication would be division. And what I'm going to do is divide this side of my equation by 16, because that will cancel out the multiplication. So that leaves me with L, which is what I wanted. And then remember, the golden rule of algebra is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. So I'm going to come over here and divide 128 by 16. And I do not know that off the top of my head, so let me just set up a little long division. Hmm, I know that 16 times 10 is 160. That's too big. So let me, let me guess and check. Let's go with 7. That sounds reasonable. 16 times 7. 6 times 7 is 42. And 7 times 1 plus 4 is 11, 112, a little bit too small. Let me try 8, 16 times 8, I know 8 times 6 is 48, and 8 times 1 plus 4 is 12. Ah, perfect, that gives me 128. So that means that 16 times 8 is 128, so my solution is 8. And let's go back to our equation. So we know we're left with L over here for length. And then over here, we found that it was 8. Um, so now in order to answer this question fully, we would want to label our answer. So it says, what is the length? We would say 8 inches. That is our unit. So final answer, 8 inches. All right, let's go check out one more problem. This one says Samuel has an ant farm with a volume of 375 cubic inches. The width of the ant farm is 2.5 inches and the length is 15 inches. What is the height of Samuel's ant farm? Alright, so same thing here. Let's write down our equation. Volume equals length times width times height. And then let's fill in all the information that we know. So starting with volume. We do know the volume. It tells us it is 375 cubic inches. Okay, next is the length. Let me look in the problem. It says the length is 15 inches, so we can put that in our equation. 
Next up is the width, and it tells us the width is two and a half inches or 2.5. So let me multiply that in my equation. And finally is the height. And our question says, what is the height? So we don't know that yet. That's what we're trying to figure out. So let's see if you guys can remember what to do next. We can simplify this equation. And we're going to do that by multiplying these two numbers that we have. So 15 times 2 and a half. Let's see. I know that's going to be at least 30. 15 times 2.5. 5 times 5 is 25, that would be 7. Don't forget in your second row, put a 0 as the placeholder. Then 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. And then let's see, we've got 5, 7, 3. And then I have one number behind the decimal point, so I move it back once, and that is 37.5. Okay, so that makes our equation a little bit simpler. Let me put that in there. And we know we're going to multiply it by h, which is the height. And we know it has to equal 375. So let's think about how to solve this equation. Sorry, that 5 is a little disconnected. Okay, so we know that 37.5 times h is 375. So we know the inverse of multiplication is division. So what would I need to divide this by to get the h by itself? Hmm, if I divide by 37.5, that will cancel out the multiplication, and that will leave us with h, perfect. But then I gotta go to this side and divide by the same thing, divide by 37.5. So then, let's see, 375 divided by 37.5. I know I can't have a decimal on the outside, so I'm going to move it once to the right to get rid of that. And then i got to do the same thing on the inside. Move it over once so I can add a zero right there. All right, then let's think. 375, oh, if I multiply that by 10, that would be perfect. 3,750. All right, so let's see. I got 10 for my solution. So my equation would be 10 equals h. So let's think about what that means. The question was, that what is the height of Samuel's ant farm? We would say the height equals 10. And the units, again, are inches. So I would say 10 inches.